Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to set up and build your own render farm. Now if you've never done that before you might be thinking, well that sounds a little bit tricky, maybe hard even, but we're going to show you how it's actually quite easy. And the best news is you probably already have 100% of the hardware to do it, which means by the end of this video you could actually build your own free render farm, which would be nice. So if you're curious, let's get started. Before we get started, there are some things you're going to need. So the first thing you're going to need are some computers. So we went out and bought some cheap computers off the internet that we used, but that still work, and we're going to turn them into a render farm. And we're also going to show you upgrading the RAM in them, and we're going to tell you why we do that. The next thing you need is you're going to need some way to connect them together. Now, if you already have the internet in your house, chances are you already have a wireless router. And if that's the case, then you've already got everything you need hardware-wise. If not, then you're going to have to run out and buy a router. Either an Ethernet wired router or a wireless one. Either way, it doesn't matter. The next thing you need is some software. And it just so happens that we're writing some free software that helps you connect all these computers and use them to render. So this is one of the computers we'll be using in building our own render farm today. And we've got it here on the bench because we're actually going to go and upgrade the RAM first. So this was bought at an auction and it came with four gigabytes of RAM and we're going to buy, we're going to put inside it another eight gigabytes of RAM. And one of the reasons why we're doing that is you might find that you don't actually get the peak performance out of the processor that you've bought if you run out of RAM. And that can happen quite easily if you're doing a scene which has got a lot of complex geometry. So what you'll find is It'll be quite quick on some scenes with not much geometry, and then when you load up a scene that's got a lot of meshes in it or that's quite complicated, it can slow down quite a lot, and that's because when it runs out of RAM, it has to use the hard drive, and the hard drive's a lot slower. So now we're going to open it up and put another 8 gigabytes of RAM in it, and then we're going to put it back with the other computers in our render farm, and then test out how fast we can get this whole render farm to render. Okay, so we've got the case open, and we're going to upgrade the RAM real quick. A couple of things, well, more than a couple of things, a few things to make sure you get right. First off, uh, read the technical specification for the machine you're upgrading. Really easy to get um, that online these days, and that way you know what kind of RAM to buy if you're going to do this. And you'll notice that you know RAM comes in various fact, uh, form factors, so this is a UDIM, unbuffered DIM memory, it comes with 240 pins and a little notch right there. Uh, if you buy the wrong RAM, it won't fit, and you'll be very disappointed. Other things, again, read the technical specification for your machine and make sure you know what frequency of memory to get. Sorry, that's out of focus. So this is 1333 megahertz memory, and that is what this machine requires. Other gotchas when upgrading RAM, you'll see if I zoom in here, Get my finger in the way. There are one, two, three, four slots, and two of them are occupied. Now, you would think you can just stick the RAM in any old order you like. That's not actually true. You actually have to, in this particular motherboard, stick it in a certain sequence, and that's, again, in the technical specification. So this new memory module that I've got actually has to go in this slot. It can't go in that one, otherwise it won't be picked up. So just be aware of that when you're upgrading the you need to know, number one, what type of memory to buy, and number two, which slots you have to fill first, because there's an order to the slots that you've got to fill. Other precautions you might want to take, uh, make sure before you touch anything inside that you've touched the case. And the reason why you do that is to avoid static electricity on your hands from killing any components in here, because that can happen. So before you go and grab anything inside or fiddle around with stuff, just touch the bare metal of the case and that will make sure that any nasty static electricity has been dissipated into the case and not into all the components. Okay, something that I've just noticed, if I go and place my camera over here, just get it to focus. So I move up this RAM slot here, you can notice there's actually quite a lot of dust right about there. And dust is gonna be a problem. So, you know, this computer has probably been in operation for about three years before I bought it at auction which means it's had a lot of air and dust moving through it throughout that time, and it's probably never had a RAM module in that slot since it was made, so there's probably quite a lot of dust and debris sitting in that slot that's just been blown in there. So you want to get that out, because that could cause problems with connection, which means you might do everything right, put this computer back together, and then the RAM doesn't appear, or the computer won't boot, and you'll be like, oh gosh, have I fried a component? So probably better to be safe than sorry, and actually vacuum that stuff out first. All right, so we've now vacuumed most, hopefully all the dust out of that memory slot. 
And what we're going to do now is install the RAM. So one thing to be aware of when you're installing RAM is to make sure that this little notch lines up with the key. So if you can peer down there with me, you can see that each of these RAM slots has a little plastic key halfway down which has to line up with this notch. So it looks like it goes that way. Also you have to open these plastic clips either end for the RAM to be able to slot in. Now you might actually have to, if I just drop that in there, and it's in at one end and it's in the other, you might find you actually have to push quite hard in order for this to get in. In fact, sometimes it feels like, oh my gosh, I'm going to break it. Um, you're not going to break it, but you do have to push down quite hard until you hear a click. So let's just do that. Click, click. Yeah, and I actually had to push quite hard there. So don't worry if you think, oh gosh, have I bought the right RAM? It doesn't feel like it's going to fit. As long as that notch lines up and it's the right width, then you're going to be fine, but you do have to push quite hard. Okay, so we've put the machine back online and we can see now that we've got 12 gigabytes of RAM before it was four, so that's great. And as I said before, increasing the RAM doesn't necessarily increase the speed of all of your renders. The speed of your renders is typically done, typically determined by the speed of your CPU. What it will do, it means that you can render much larger scenes without them slowing to a crawl. Because scenes with larger geometry sets, like very complex meshes or complex models, they'll require a lot more RAM. And if you're if your system runs out of RAM and it can't load the entire scene there, it'll start to use the hard drive and virtual memory, which will make the render run much, much slower. So having extra RAM just basically means that you can enjoy the maximum speed that your CPU can process at uh, for much larger and more complex scenes. So before we move on to the next section of the video, I just want to give a quick shout out and mention of a really useful tool I'm using right now called TeamViewer. So if you haven't ever used it before, TeamViewer is basically a remote desktop client and it's really, really handy, especially in situations where you've got maybe one or two computers that you want to use, but you don't want to have a, a video or a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse for each of them. So this computer, which I've just put back together, doesn't have a keyboard attached, it doesn't have a mouse attached, it doesn't have a monitor attached. All it has is a USB Wi-Fi adapter and all I have to do is switch it on and then I can remotely control it using TeamViewer which is, is really great especially if you've got a lot of these computers around. Um, if you're building a render farm you're going to have multiple machines and it's really handy if you don't have to buy um, a separate monitor, keyboard and mouse for each of them or even what's called a KVM switch which basically allows you to use just one keyboard and mouse and monitor for multiple machines. Um, they tend to be expensive and TeamViewer for private use is free. So effectively, you know, for just buying a, a Wi-Fi adapter, which I had to anyway for each machine, I can remotely control all the render nodes um, just from one machine and I can even do that when I'm on the move. So TeamViewer will work on across the internet so I can be out and about and I can set renders happening and I don't even have to be in the house. So really handy software. Okay, so now we're gonna set up CrowdRender. Now, I currently don't have it installed on this machine, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that so you can see how we do this. So I'm just going to the Add-ons tab in the User Preferences, and CrowdRender is currently distributed as a zip file, so it's pretty easy to install. All you have to do is find where you've put your file. I've put mine on the desktop, in a special folder where I can hopefully find it quite easily. And all you do is you highlight the zip file and then just click install add-on. Once the add-on's installed, you just click to enable it. And then click save user settings if you want it to be enabled each time you use Blender. Otherwise, you can just leave it off and just enable it when you actually want to use it. So having done that now, you should notice that we've got the new panel in here which controls the crowd render render farm that you're going to build. I've got mine set up so I have some nodes that I use frequently already in there. So you can now do this, you can now actually save computers that you use frequently into the blend file. So I've got a number of machines here, one of which is the new one, which we just worked on. And I've also got a few other computers in there. So now we're going to actually go and use TeamViewer to look at the other machine and just make sure it's installed there. So now we're using TeamViewer to actually remotely control that computer that we just rebuilt and we're going to do the same thing here. So we're just going to go and look for the zip file to install CrowdRender and then hit install from file and then enable. Okay, and that's pretty much our setup. 
So now what we need to do is we actually need to go back to the computer where we're going to control this from. So that's usually the one that you're working on. And so that for me is the laptop I was working from because this is where the bin file is. Okay, so now that we have CrowdRender installed on our new computer, we can actually use them to render. And to do that, we come over to the CrowdRender panel. We highlight that machine and we simply hit connect. And we should see it go through the motions of connecting and synchronizing. Okay, and there, it's synchronized. Now we've actually got an identical machine because we've got two of these, so I'm actually going to use that other one as well. And connect to that one. And I've gone through exactly the same process to install and enable it on that machine. I just didn't think you'd want to see it twice. All right, so we've now got both of those machines synchronized and ready to go, which means we should be able to do a render. So first what I'll do is I'll actually do a benchmark render just using the normal cycles render engine and that will just give you an idea of how long this would take if I only had this one laptop and then we'll compare to how fast it is when we use those two other machines plus this laptop because all three of them will actually render and we'll compare the times um, and I'll speed this up as well so you don't have to sit here and watch my one laptop labor through doing this benchmark okay so that's just about finished and looks like we can get a render time around 10 minutes there you go 10 minutes and almost three seconds Okay, so now pretty much what we're going to do is repeat that experiment, but this time we're not going to use the normal Cycles engine. We're going to use CrowdRender, which will still use the Cycles engine, but it will distribute it, or CrowdRender will distribute it across three machines. So we're just going to redo this now and see how long it takes with all three computers rendering the same scene. So that's a render time of five minutes and two seconds, which is about half of what it took the laptop that I'm using at the moment to do the scene by itself. And that for me is just a great result. Being able to half my render time is fantastic. And um, particularly given I didn't really spend a whole much on those other two machines. Um, just an observation though, there are three machines that are rendering together in this last experimental run. Um, so initially you might be thinking, well, how come I didn't get a third of the time rather than just half of it? Um, I know for a fact that the computer I'm using to do the screencasting from, i.e. the laptop, it was built in 2016. Those two other PCs which I bought at auction, they were cheap because they were probably built somewhere between 2011 and 2013. And I know for a fact that the laptop here has a, a memory bus speed of about 1800 megahertz. The other two PCs, as you might have observed when I was putting the RAM in, they're 1333 megahertz. So there's about a 500 megahertz or half a gigahertz difference in memory transfer speed, which makes quite an impact. But what I really wanted to show was you can build a render farm really quickly. Like all I had to do is install an add-on on each of the computers and then just press the connect button and that's it. So if you have spare computers lying around, you can build a render farm out of them really quickly. And it, it works pretty much the same as Blender works. So you don't really have to learn anything new other than just the button to connect them and how to do that. So if after watching all of this, you're keen to try building your own render farm, then what you need to do is to head to our website and to register to test the alpha version of CrowdRender. It's not actually available for download yet because it's in what we call closed alpha, which means we're only really giving it out to people who promise or are willing for us to contact them for feedback. We want to be able to get this software to the point where it's got all the features it needs and we've removed any bugs which prevent it from being used on most systems so it's actually beneficial to the community. So if you want to try it out and you're okay with being contacted for feedback, then head to our website which we'll leave a link in the description below. And we encourage you to stick around and watch a couple of our other videos. We've got a demonstration that shows how to use this uh, the new version that we're building and also some other stuff on our website which may be of interest to you like how it works with denoising um, how we managed to get this scene which we rendered today down to 20 seconds and a whole bunch of other interesting stuff which we have on our website which might help you out if you need to render something really fast thank you so much for watching this video and we also want to thank all the people who have followed us on facebook twitter and youtube and who've supported us to get us this far we're very grateful for all the people who are currently testing the alpha and who've given us feedback and if you'd like to join them then you know, please head to our website subscribe and follow us on social media and we'll see you next time okay so things that you will Okay, so some things that you will need. You will need some computers. More than one. There's one I bought earlier. <laughs> in case you don't know what they look like. Um, boxy.